This video walks you through the Review Fundamentals Learning Exercise on the Medano website. Now, to the extent you've built your models using the standardization tools that were discussed in the Standardization Fundamentals Learning Exercise, your model will contain an error check summary at the back, and that error check summary will contain a range of error checks along with potential alert checks that will make it really clear when an error has been triggered. Now, the problem with that is even if you have used checks extensively, you often open up a model and you find that there are daisy chain resulting errors throughout the whole model. So in this case, imagine we've picked up this model off a colleague and we're like, we've immediately noticed there's 10 errors. Now, we can obviously go to the error check summary and we can say, okay, there's a whole bunch of errors. The problem we have is if we go to say the income statement, that's actually an error that's obviously been caused by another part of the model. So you can see we can follow this through. Now, in a large and complex model, that's time consuming. So the Medano auditing tools are really designed to minimize the amount of time you spend auditing your models as you build them and auditing models that other people provide to you. They're not really designed for hardcore auditing like Spreadsheet Detective, for example. They're really designed to enable you to keep your model in best practice and error-free as you build it and in some cases reviewing other people's models to find errors in them. So the number one tool in the auditing package for finding errors is the search and repair tool. Now, the search and repair tool does a search of the, full, of the whole model and looks for errors error source ranges, errors in things like conditional formats, invalid cell content where you want to use cell content formatting. So for example, identify consonants versus mixed cells and things like invalid names. So if you run this tool on this workbook, you'll see it will search every single sheet. I'm running it on the entire workbook. It will search the entire workbook and it will return obviously a lot of formula errors because there are formula errors everywhere. Now, one of the handiest features of this tool is the ability to then say, where are the error source ranges? Now, error source ranges are different to normal formula errors in that they do not have precedent errors. So in this case, there's only really one error source range in this entire workbook. And that error source range is in the range J16 to N16 on the revenue and expenses outputs. And what this means is this formula is returning an error and it doesn't have error precedents. So it's effectively driving a lot of errors in the model, but it's not actually being driven by errors. So this tool rapidly enables you to identify a very small number of errors that are causing a very large number of errors in your model. Now that we've identified that error, let's go to that error range. And what we're going to do is we're going to load the Traverse Formula tool. Now, most people familiar with Medano will have heard of this tool. The Traverse Formula tool really just enables you to drill down into formulas. And in this case, we can explore why this, error, why this formula is returning an error. Now, if I look at this, the formula is saying, okay, take the revenue number, and then if the, if this equals one, which is the currency equals one, put one, otherwise divide by the exchange rate. Now in this case, the exchange rate assumption is zero. So this formula is an erroneous formula because it hasn't allowed for the fact that the exchange rate may not have been entered by the model user. So the traverse formula tool enables us to quickly, I can actually drill down and I can go back to my top level formula and I can drill down into precedence. So the traverse formula tool is a really quick way of, of locating the reasons behind formula logic not being what you would think it would be. It also contains a logic button in there where I can actually view the logic in formulas and I can actually show logic formatting to see which parts of if statements are active or inactive at any point in time. So in this case, the logical test within the if statement is returning false, which is why the active part of the formula is this cell, which is the zero, which is the div zero error we're getting. Now in this case, what we'd really want to do is, is note that that formula is an error, uh, but we also want to remove the errors from the model because we just don't want to save models and have them sitting there with errors in them. So I'm going to close that dialog. I'm then going to click on this to go back to the assumptions. I'm going to go to the assumptions and then I'm going to change that to dollars, which if I then click on the hyperlink to my outputs, gets rid of the error. But obviously I've changed an assumption. So I need to really make this clear to other model users and developers that this formula is effectively a landmine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that block of formulas because it's a consistent formula and I'm going to apply whip yellow, which is work in progress yellow fill coloring. Now whip yellow fill coloring is really powerful because effectively you can apply it throughout your model and then you can put your workbook in, save you when someone opens it. And then if you can, if your, your whole team is using whip, you can then go in and say, okay, let's locate whip ranges. And you can quickly locate the areas of your model that are work in progress in this case there, and then go to them. So the whip yellow is, is effectively a breadcrumb based system that makes it really easy for you to track and maintain and easily find work in progress areas in your models. Now, in addition to work in progress fill coloring, you may want to include an issues register in your model. Now, Medano enables you to put an issues register in your model so you can track changes to the model or issues that are outstanding and provide information to people in your team about or to yourself about what needs to be done going forward to fix these issues. 
So to insert an issues register, just go to the Medano tab, issues tracking menu, and click on insert issues register. You can choose which columns you're going to include. So I'll add, say, resolution steps and maybe resolve by, uh, and click insert. And you'll see it just adds an issued register sheet in the appendices. So if I go to the table of contents, you see the issued register is down the back in 4B. And basically now I can start adding issues to this issued register. Now there are two ways I can add issues to, to the issued register. The first one is by going to search and repair and actually running this tool and adding whatever is found by this tool to the issues register automatically. And that's called automated issues tracking. And it's quick and easy. And you'll see in this case, it's found four errors uh, because I've obviously fixed the formula error. Uh, and we've got a couple of invalid cell content errors, which are errors that have been raised because the, the cell content font coloring is incorrect. In this case, this one's formula, whereas it's actually got constants, so it should be blue and it's black. In this case, it's black, which indicates it's a formula, but the actual content is mixed. And then we have the whip range that we added uh, in relation to that formula logic, logic error. And we have the redundant name, which is probably there because a sheet's been deleted or a row's been deleted. So I'm just gonna click add to issues register to add those to the issues register. And you'll see the four issues are reported and they're open to start with. And obviously when I go forward and I and I resolve those, I will close those and I can either delete the rows or I can keep them in there effectively to keep a running log of what has been resolved in this model. Now, the other way of reporting issues is manually reporting issues. Now to manually report issues, you go to the source of the issue. So in this case, let's assume I want to report the revenue and expenses formula error here. I'm gonna select the range containing the formula logic error, and then I'm gonna to go to the issues tracking menu and just click on report issue. In this case, I'm gonna report a formula logic error. It gives you some options or you can just make them up. There's no specific requirement as to what you label things. And I'm gonna enter in the description of this error as this formula does not allow for non-base currencies being assumed for revenue categories with zero exchange rate assumptions entered. And for resolution steps, I'm going to enter amend the formula to check for non-zero exchange rate assumptions before dividing. And as a comment, I'm going to put, I'd also add an alert check to the revenue assumptions, which is triggered if at least one exchange rate assumption is zero. So effectively what I've done is just reported this error, made it clear what the actual error is and provided some some insight as to how I would recommend fixing it because I've put the time into working out what the issue is. And if I click report, you'll see it adds a row for that formula logic error. And I've now got five issues in my issues register. Now, as I said before, to the extent you'd like to open and close errors and issues as you report them and, and resolve them, you can use the actual closed method or you can delete the entire rows. You can also use the tools that are used to report errors, such as the search and repair tool, to resolve a lot of these issues and then to remove them automatically from the issues register. So in this case, I'm going to be able to use this tool to format the invalid cell content cell. So I'm going to click format for this and you see that's, that's made them blue now. And then I'm going to click format for the heading there, which is going to make that green. I'm going to leave the whip and the redundant name I'm going to delete. And now if I click add to issues register again, it removes those issues because they were auto reported. So they're auto removed. And now I'm left with the two issues that need to be resolved, which is really just this single formula logic error. The whip range makes it easy to be found using the locate whip ranges tool. Uh, and the formula logic error issue that I've reported here enables it that whoever comes in to actually find out what's wrong and easily fix it. And that's really how the auditing tools are designed to be used. So you use the auditing tools such as the traverse formula tool to help better understand formulas and logic within them. You use the search and repair tools and there are a range of other tools you can use, for example, to protect your all the worksheets in the workbook. But use those tools while you're building the model to make sure that you don't have errors in your model while you're building. Um, and then you track your issues as you find them and, and close them or delete them as you resolve them. And that is how you maintain a best practice error-free model at all times.